Hi there, it's Alexandra from the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and blog and today we're going to talk about making really easy compost. Garden compost is so good for your garden, it'll make your plants grow really well and it'll save you having to take garden waste to the recycling centre. Plus, of course, it's very good for the environment because you're recycling without involving a car. But there are quite a lot of myths around compost and it can sometimes sound complicated. It isn't. If you're new here, the Middle Sized Garden uploads videos once a week and they're absolutely free, so if you'd like to see them when you open up YouTube, click the subscribe button. And if you'd like YouTube to tell you when a new video is uploaded, then click the notifications bell. I'll be answering a number of commonly asked questions in this video, so I'll put those in the description below with timestamps, so if you want to jump to a particular question, then do. Firstly, what is garden compost? It's not the same as what we call potting compost here in the UK. Garden compost is rotted down waste from your garden with kitchen scraps such as raw fruit and vegetable peelings and it can also have paper and cardboard in it. Potting compost is actually manufactured and you'll buy it in sacks. It's a soil-like substance and you get it from the garden centre and it's specifically made for container-grown plants or for growing plants from seed and you can't actually grow plants from seed just in plain ordinary garden compost. So garden compost is the one that you make from your recycled scraps and garden clippings and it's the one you want to lay on your soil once a year. You can't lay potting compost on your soil to improve it once a year. Well, you could, but it's not actually a particularly good use of the potting compost. So, what's the super easy way of making garden compost? You buy or make a compost bin or bins. You throw your garden waste into it, plus your raw vegetables and fruit scraps. Maybe some paper and cardboard. And you leave it. In six to 18 months time, that will be garden compost. There are a couple of tips that are worth knowing about choosing a compost bin and how you can speed up the process, but they're not difficult. Firstly, you'll read that you need approximately a 50-50 split of brown waste and green waste. So what does that mean? Well, green waste is all the leaves and the grasses, the grass clippings, any of the green parts of the plants that you dig up or you cut back in your garden. Green waste is also raw fruit and vegetable scraps and coffee grounds. Brown waste is cardboard, newspaper, twigs, wood chips, wood ash, dead leaves. In fact, most of them are brown, although you can't completely go by the colour because coffee grounds are green waste and they look brown. You can put wood ash on compost heaps, but don't put coal ash on it because coal has got some chemicals in it that are not good for the garden. So what's the best compost bin to buy? You have a choice between wood, plastic and just leaving a pile on the ground in the corner of the garden. But that's not a particularly good use of space, so unless you've got a very large garden you're probably going to want a wood or a plastic bin. And then there's the shape. You can go for square, a bell shape or a beehive. Personally I prefer the square because I think the other two are not such a good use of space. The square one uses all the vertical space properly and there are a few things about the bell-shaped plastic ones that I personally don't like. So what to think about when you're choosing a compost bin? Well the two most important things is that you need to be able to get the garden waste in easily and you need to be able to get the compost out easily. So you need quite a wide big top so that you can get things in without fiddling around. It's also a good idea to stir or turn your compost every so often and so you'll need access at the top for that and that's why I don't like the bell shaped ones because they can have quite small tops. The other thing is getting the compost out at the end. Now a lot of compost bins have got a little hatch or a slat at the bottom and the idea is, is that you can use a spade just to get the compost out at the bottom where it will be well rotted and meanwhile leaving the rest of the compost that isn't rotted at the top. But to be honest, this doesn't really quite work. As soon as you get enough compost out the bottom, the not very well rotted stuff drops down. It's a very awkward manoeuvre and it's quite difficult to get a spade into some of the smaller hatches or slots. 
what is much easier to do is if you've got, say, two compost bins or three compost bins, is leave one to rot down completely and then just use it. Take the compost out the top. But if you've only got one compost bin, then what you can do is when there's well rotted material at the bottom of the bin, just simply take the not so rotted material out of the top and use the material that's at the bottom and then just simply return the not yet rotted material back to the bin to start a fresh batch. The other thing that a compost bin needs is a lid or some kind of shelter. If you look at this row of seven compost bins at Charles Dowding's Homemaker's Small Holding, you'll see that he has a sort of roofed, seven bins in a row with a roof on it, and that's proper serious composting. And Charles has some very good videos about composting on his YouTube channel. But for us, middle-sized gardeners, usually buy a compost bin with a lid, or if your lid goes astray, or you don't have a lid, then throw a tarpaulin over the top. Make sure that the lid comes off easily and goes back on easily, because once again, you don't want to be fiddling around too much. So what goes in the garden compost? I think there's probably more myths and misunderstandings about this than anything, because I think all of us have been told at some point that there is just one thing you must never, never put in the compost. And actually, there's an awful lot of things you can put in the compost. You can put all raw fruit and vegetable peelings in. Some people think you can't put potato peelings in because they'll sprout into potatoes, but I've quite often put whole potatoes in and occasionally they do sprout into potatoes. And I just snap the stem off and just return that stem to the compost and it's fine. People worry about citrus fruits. They think it'll make the compost too acidic, but you would need such a lot of lemon and orange and grapefruit peel to achieve that, really. If you've got a factory for orange juice next door, then perhaps, you know, don't use all their excess oranges. But otherwise, citrus fruits, absolutely fine. My mother always used to say you couldn't put grass clippings in the compost because otherwise you'd get grass growing in your borders when you returned the compost to the borders. But once the grass has rotted down, it's not grass any longer, it's compost. And most grass is cut before it's actually had a chance to flower and seed, so there are no seeds in it. Too much grass clippings in compost can make it slimy or smell, but what you need to do is simply to add some cut up paper or cardboard and that will balance it out. Recently, we've been buying food in compostable cartons and also some of the supermarket bags are compostable plastic bags. So far, I think the compostable plastic bags from the supermarket do seem to compost down in reasonably fast time, but I haven't had the compostable packaging for long enough to see how long it takes to compost down. But if it takes much longer than the rest of my garden compost, I'll simply filter it out and return it to the compost heap so that it can have that extra time. And as for autumn leaves, well, if you add autumn leaves to the compost, they do take a bit longer than the rest of it to rot down. But you can sort that out by running the mower over them before you add them to the compost heap. Or you can do what we do, which is simply to mow the lawn with the leaves on it and then throw all that into the compost heap. And that's a ready-made 50-50 mix of green and brown. So can you compost garden weeds? Well, this is tricky. If you have a hot composting method, and I will explain that later, then you can compost garden weeds because it gets very hot and it's very dark and the weeds and their seeds will be killed off before they have a chance to sprout. But in an easy compost pile like mine, there is some light and they may have a chance to sprout. So it's probably not a good idea to add weeds. Expert gardener Sally Nex has written a book called How to Garden the Low Carbon Way and I'll put a link to that in the description below. It's a really practical book full of low cost, low waste ways of gardening. And her suggestion with garden weeds is that you put them into a bucket and cover them with water and they will rot down in about a month. And then once they're completely rotted, you can safely add them to the garden compost. So that's definitely something I'm going to be trying. Can you add dog, cat or pet waste to garden compost? It's strongly advised that you don't add dog or cat waste to your garden compost because they're meat eaters. But rabbits and guinea pigs are not meat eaters, so you can add their waste and their straw to your compost. And of course you can add cow and horse manure, although if you've got cows or horses then that's rather a large pile of manure, so your compost would really kind of disappear. It would really be a, a manure heap rather than a compost heap. Will compost attract flies? On the whole, garden compost will not attract house flies. It's very important that you don't put cooked food or meat and fish 
into the compost heap because that all will attract flies. But raw fruit and vegetable peelings may just attract fruit flies, but if you keep it covered, that shouldn't be a problem. So that's another reason for having either a lid or tarpaulin on top of your compost. Does garden compost take a long time to make? Well, now this is where you need to have the difference between cold composting and hot composting, which I call the difference between easy composting and fast composting. A hot composting system gets the compost very, very hot, so it destroys all sorts of things. You can actually add all kinds of food waste, including cooked food, meat and fish, to a hot composting system. There's often a particular container for these, like there is a hot bin, a bakashi bin or a wormery. And that composting, because it's hot, is very fast, but it takes a lot more attention. Hot composting is perfectly easy once you get to know how to do it, but it's not what I would call super easy composting. You may have to add bran or you may have to add charcoal. You have to keep an eye on the balance between green and brown much more closely. Hot composting is a very good system and it will give you really fast compost. It'll just be a question of months. But easy composting is called cold composting and that will take maybe six or eight months at the minimum and maybe 18 months to two years at the maximum for your garden waste to turn into garden compost. There are a few things you can do that are easy to speed it up and one of the simplest things is to use a garden shredder. I've got a video on whether you need a garden shredder to help you decide in the description below. But broadly speaking, a garden shredder, you need somewhere to keep it, it's an investment, and also it does take a certain amount of time to shred garden waste. But it does mean that you can compost an awful lot more of your garden waste and that your compost will be much quicker. So we decided that for us, a garden shredder was a really good idea. This compost here was shredded six months ago and it's ready to use. As well as cutting up your garden waste really small or using a shredder, the other thing you can do to speed it up is to turn it or really stir it is what I would call it. Now you can do this in two ways. You can li literally get a spade and get whole spadefuls of compost and transfer them from one bin to another. Or you can do what I do, which is to plunge a garden fork deep into the compost bin and then rotate it as widely as you can. And then once you've done that for a minute or so, pull the garden fork out and then do it in a different part of the compost heap. It's a very useful tip, this. It'll always make the volume of compost go down a bit and it will aerate it, which is good for the microorganisms that make the garden compost. If your garden compost looks absolutely full and you've just mowed the lawn and want to add some more lawn clippings to it, get out your fork and do this method because you'll notice that the level will drop enough, often enough just to add a few more lawn mowerfuls of grass clippings. So when do you use garden compost? Well, once it's rotted down so it looks more or less like soil, you add a layer, most people say, and two inches, three inches, one inch, across your borders. And you can do this in either autumn or spring. It's important not to get confused between garden compost and fertilizer, because fertilizer can't be put down in the autumn because the rains will come and the chemicals in the fertilizer can be washed away. The plants aren't growing so that they don't use the fertilizer. However, adding garden compost in a layer to your soil is feeding your soil. The worms and the microorganisms will appreciate the garden compost throughout the winter and they'll improve your soil quality so that when you come to plant in spring, you will have better soil. So autumn or spring and autumn is a very good time. So can you use too much garden compost? Well, if you think that your garden compost is made entirely from stuff that's come out of your garden, plus some kitchen scraps, it's hard to see how using too much of it is a possibility because you're only returning to the garden what has come from the garden. So personally, I wouldn't worry too much about how much you put on. Put on an inch, two inches, three inches. If you think you've put it on too thickly, put on less next time. I don't think it's something you really need to be too concerned about. Can garden compost be used in pots? Well, no, not just as it is. That's why you buy potting compost, which is a mix. 
The RHS says that you can mix two thirds of garden soil with a third of garden compost and then add perhaps some fertilizer granules and some water retaining granules and that that would make a potting mix that you could use in pots. And Sally Nex's How to Garden the Low Carbon Way has also got some recipes for using garden compost in potting mixes. But I kind of like the easy way and I just buy a potting mix, frankly. So do you need fertiliser if you use garden compost? Well, a lot of very good gardeners rely entirely on garden compost and they don't fertilise their plants. And most plants will be fine if you add a layer of garden compost or well-rotted manure on your borders at least once a year. However, there are some plants which are extra hungry and I would put, certainly in my garden, roses and vegetables as the two. And I do use additional fertilisers on those. And I do it in spring and summer when they're growing and they can take the fertilisers out of the soil. So it's very much up to you. If you think your roses aren't looking great or your vegetable harvest isn't great, you perhaps might need to fertilise. But you can certainly try to see if garden compost is enough. There are other practical gardening tips such as how to weed in our practical tips playlist at the end of this video. And if you've got any garden compost tips then I'd love to hear them in the comments below. And if you'd like more tips, ideas and inspiration for your garden then do subscribe to the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and thank you for watching. Goodbye.